The content areas in writing. A professional development presentation presented to Lake Region High School content area teachers by H.D. Childry. Your English teachers are working very hard to improve their students' writing, but this isn't a task we can accomplish alone. Just as reading teachers need the content area teachers to provide reading time in class to support their efforts to make reading an integral part of our students' lives, so too do the English teachers need your support to help us make writing, and writing well, part of students' lives. Before you panic, Neither administration nor I are asking you to have students write essays and grade them as an English teacher would. That isn't your job. However, there are certain things you can do to help us. First, let's look at the data. You've seen this before, but I've made it look a little prettier. You'll notice that 37% of last year's 10th graders earned a passing score or higher on FCAT 2.0 in reading. Look though at the categories and our students average points earned and the maximum points available. Now look at our 10th grade data, excuse me, look at our 9th grade data. You'll notice that 38% of last year's 9th graders scored a level 3 or higher. But again, look at the average points our students earned and the maximum number of points available. I hope you see what I noticed. We're averaging about half of the available points in each category. In 2003, Carol Booth Olson, a University of California Irvine professor and researcher, published the Reading Writing Connection, Strategies for Teaching and Learning in the Secondary Classroom. According to Olson, research indicates that when reading and writing are taught together, they engage students in a greater use and variety of cognitive strategies than when they are taught separately. Reading and writing are complementary processes that use similar cognitive strategies. Thus, working in one area does help the other area, but in order to greatly improve students' reading and writing, we must work on reading and writing together. The sad news is that over 60% of our students are not good readers, according to FCAT scores. And based upon what I've seen of our students' writing, about 60% are not very good writers. While the strategies are the same, the degree readers and writers use these strategies is different. According to Frank Smith, a researcher, writing tends to be laborious. It is tiring physically and demands more concentration. And it is slow, perhaps 10 times slower than the speed at which we comfortably manage to read, speak, or listen to speech. But it is for this reason that writing as a learning tool is so powerful. Remember these numbers from Max Thompson's learning focus training? Summarizing improves student achievement, but look at extended thinking of which writing is a part. We focused a great deal on summarizing, but extended thinking has the greatest impact on student achievement. The key, though, is implementation. So what does this mean for the content area teachers? As an English teacher and an intensive reading teacher, I've been able to make writing a part of my class in ways that include more than simply essay writing. First, my students do one sentence summaries each day for the books they are reading. The single sentence after their 10 minute reading time allows me to check many things related to writing.
And here is an example from a s this student. I have several questions for the student, even though this is a grammatically correct sentence. First, who is he? Why did he eat the bee? And what happened as a result of eating the bee? Notice that with the one sentence summary that I require, students must automatically write longer sentences. And in order to get all of that information into one sentence, the student must develop punctuation skills using semicolons and modifiers. For one paragraph summaries and reflections, my grading is a bit more complex. I'm always looking for four specific items, and I use check marks on the student's paper to indicate whether or not the student has included those items. All of this is in a single paragraph, but again, it's another piece to help the student learn to automatically include an introduction, body, and conclusion in his or her writing. Notice that students are to provide two proofs with explanation. These proofs must be completely separate, and the student must be excuse me, and the student must explain how they relate to the topic. Remember, I'm looking for a claim, evidence with commentary, and a closure with decent grammar. But I don't even know what this particular paragraph is supposed to be about. In addition, there's a quotation, but it's not introduced properly, nor is it formatted properly, and the same vocabulary word is repeated without any explanation. This is an actual paragraph that I received last year. The students were asked to summarize the tone for the John Lennon song, Imagine. Not only does the student title the paragraph, but she states the topic, properly introduces quotes tells, telling where they're from, uses more complicated sentence structure, and the grammar in this case is all correct. Brockton High School in Massachusetts used a writing across the curriculum strategy to improve test scores. The school improvement plan identified a course of action to make every teacher a teacher of reading to address the low literacy rates and skills among students. Faculty meetings were devoted to literacy and math training and the sharing of best practices from each department. Evaluations of teaching staff included a component related to this goal. Each department's steering committee developed a program philosophy that included guiding principles course requirements and use of technology and best pr practices. Departmental meetings and, form and informal office meetings were used to review and demonstrate these school, school skills. In addition, students implemented a written component in their school feedback plan. As a result of this initiative that began in 2005, 82% of students passed their English MCAS. If a school this large, with such a large ESOL population and a, such a large free and reduced population, can have 82% of the students pass their state reading assessment, then certainly we can accomplish the same goal. The major component, though, was that all written assignments in the content areas at Brockton High School were graded according to the rubric you received at the start of this meeting. At Brockton, students are trained in ninth grade on how to use the rubric. There are four categories scores, whether they are students, teachers, or administrators, look at. Content, form, legibility, and length. Legibility and length are pretty self-explanatory on the rubric. A one if it is legible, a zero if it is not. A one if it is of an appropriate length, zero if it is not. In my classroom, we generally use the guideline that length is however long it takes for a student to fully answer the question, whether that is a one sentence summary, a one paragraph summary or reflection, 
or a five-paragraph essay. Length depends upon the type of assignment. Let's look at content on your handout. There are five levels within content rated 8, 6, 4, 2, and 0. Each level deals with the same items, a statement of main idea or thesis, answering the question fully, providing proof or evidence from the text and explaining the proof, and demonstrating comprehension of the subject matter. The items are differentiated based upon student responses, such as giving a clear main idea at level 6 and level 4 only having a main idea. The idea in holistic scoring is not to provide a check mark for each element, though that can be done. The idea is to determine which category fits the writing overall. Is the writing mainly a 4 or a 6, or an 8, or a 2, or a 0? Let's look at form next. Content deals with what the writing has said. Form deals with how it is said. This includes transitions, words and phrases that help the flow of writing. Form also deals with strategic repetition. Not simply repeating a word, but repetition of an idea and then explaining the reasoning behind that idea. It helps to keep both the writer and the reader on task. Form also con includes control, organization, and sequencing. The sentences aren't simply thrown onto the page, but appear to have been thought about and organized so that the writing makes sense and moves forward from one idea to another. Finally, there is an element of clear sentence structure with few or no errors. Your administration and your English department do not expect you to be editors, noting every single instance where there is a problem with grammar and spelling. I'm sure you know what a sentence is and what it is not. Many of our students here at Lake Region believe that length is the key to determining if something is a sentence. That is not the case. As long as a sentence has a subject and a verb and can stand on its own or function without additional explanation, it's going to be a sentence. Both of these examples on the board are sentences. The first is a command. If I looked at our assistant principal and said, jump, you all would know exactly what our subject was. In this case, our assistant principal. In proper grammatical terms for those who are wondering, this is a command sentence and our subject is understood you. The second sentence has several subjects and verbs, and despite the fact it is long, is grammatically correct. Unfortunately, our students would have said that jump was way too short and that the second example was way too long to even be a sentence, but both are correct. But what if you receive something like this, four different sentences written as a paragraph? Each has a subject and a verb. But look carefully. You're right. You'll notice that letter A doesn't make any sense by itself. While it has a subject and a verb, it is a clause. It needs additional explanation. When you use the rubric, look at the sentences, at least briefly. Are you getting annoyed because the student has a bunch of fragments? <laughs> if that's the case, then you definitely want to mark that there's a problem with sentence structure and errors. But also, if your student never seems to use punctuation and keeps running on and on, that's a problem as well. I have received this sentence, and students have told me that it is correct. When you're looking at your student's writing, look overall for misspellings for students, for words that your students should know. You're in a lot of trouble because their books are ruined, I'm telling, is missing some correct formatting. Mastery of form is just as important as content because form indicates one's higher order thinking skills. It helps the reader understand what the writer wrote and is just as important as the content. In summary, add more writing to your content area classes because it will help improve student achievement 
It will provide your students with additional practice so that they understand that writing is important outside of the English classroom. And it will help us create a culture where good writing is expected, as well as good reading. Thank you for your time, and don't forget the follow-up assignment.